as you can see, I'm a seasoned researcher and a seasoned teacher, but although I am rich with a few decades of experience in teaching and doing research, I am still relatively new to teaching in the field of social science. I used to be a theoretical chemist. I am now in the field of STS, although technically I belong to a research group of philosophy et histoire des sciences. And I wish to teach in my new field of research, even though my tenured position is still in chemistry. I am just trying to design new kinds of classes with the hidden agenda of finally teaching what I do as a researcher, which means science and technology studies. All along my and interesting career, I have been teaching to a very large spectrum of students in numerous scientific fields, but most of the fields, most of the classes I have taught have been so far at the beginner or freshman level, and freshman is the key point here. So I want to teach a STS 101 course, um, STS for freshmen. So I offer my Sciences Société course to whoever is interested in the academic world. I have a hard time convincing deans of the director du FF because of the lack of disciplinary categorization dans les maquettes pédagogiques. And I struggle to make the class fit into existing curricula. But my asset is the versatility of the course. I argue, along with Latour's ideas of scientific humanities, that it can benefit virtually every field of academic teaching. In practice, the course has been existing since the academic year 13-14, and it is available in various forms depending on where it is taught at the Université de Lorraine. It thus holds different names according to the curricula. Sciences et Société en L1 de Philosophie à Nancy, Histoire des sciences en L2 d'Humanité à Metz, Numérique et Société à l'IUT Charlemagne, Description de controverses à Chimie Nancy, Maîtrise de l'information scientifique aux mines de Nancy, etc. The course is intended to be addressed to all kinds of university students, both in STEM areas and in social science, and it's practically suited to freshman students, aimed to make them discovering the concepts and practice of controversy mapping. The issue with freshman teaching, in France at least, is that it is often mass teaching. I have no teaching assistants, I have zero funding, I have classrooms as large as 100 students, I have no institutional design assistance. Not that I am complaining, I did personally receive institutional support to build the whole thing. <laughs> but this is to say that this is, all. this is a homemade budget course, low event spent for the masses. So the Science Society project is, of course, fully inspired by Latour's pedagogical idea of scientific humanities, uh, as described in the Kogitamus book. Its purpose is to offer students an approach to relationships between science and society through practice, that is to say, by engaging into debate on topics chosen by the students themselves. It borrows its versatility from the scientific humanities idea, and it also borrows very useful teaching material from the Media Lab Scientific Humanities MOOC, thanks to a Creative Commons licensing policy. It is essentially designed to be an introductory course for a broad spectrum of audiences, and its key concept, the best way to achieve its adaptability, is to actually let the student choose their topics on an individual basis. It is my trick to draw attention from very diverse sets of students. My observation of other controversy mapping courses I had the occasion to have a look at led me to the conclusion that it was a very creative but very demanding pedagogical idea. Also, the working structures, groups, schedules, individual role plays within groups, deadlines, were rather rigid. Given that I wanted to adapt these elite classes to the masses, I focused on the realistic pedagogy of laziness. I'm aiming to achieve modest goals. I give loose to student involvement. Attendance is not mandatory. Uh, there are unrestricted selection of topics, unrestricted group formations from indiv individual to anything, and a policy of relaxed evaluation, <laughs> passing grade to everyone participating. <laughs> So 
basically, the course consists in short lectures, <coughs> defining the concepts and providing examples. And besides, each student is asked to first fi find and then study a controversy of his or her own, or in small groups, within a weekly homework schedule. It quite resembles the flowchart we saw yesterday, with a succession of face-to-face -face lectures to the left and online homeworks to the right. The description of the chosen controversy within the course is short, it's qualitative, it's even superficial, uh, but it, and it's supposed to be explored on the World Wide Web. It's a hybrid, a blended course, in the sense that many of the students' research, but also discussions, are happening online, typically within a learning management <coughs> system like Moodle, but it is not flipped. Preliminary top-down lectures are in fact very important. Depending on the number of sessions assigned to the course, the organization varies, but some basic principles are shared. The methodological and epistemological principles of the course are first described using the introductory example of the portrait de Gaston Lagaffe en philosophe des techniques uh, by Bruno Latour. Yes. It allows uh, a nice introduction to basic concepts of actor network theory, like uh, translation, enrollment, etc. And the whole course is then divided into, into two parts. The first part, essentially face-to-face, -face, mainly in the form of lectures, offers case studies, chosen by me, which may vary according to the, to the scope of the course. The other part goes both face-to-face -face and online, and it consists for students in choosing topics that they feel are relevant to the course and to discuss them. Basically, it goes like this. Lecture, portrait de Gaston Lagaffe en philosophie et technique, homework, find a link to a piece of news. Lecture, l'importance des sources selon Wikipedia, homework, elaborate a corpus of new links, vote and debate on, on them. Lecture, the history of the pill, thanks to, um, to uh, what's her name? Mm -hmm. uh, Ellen Tyler um, um, The history of the pill allows me to a description of a socio-technical project and its actors. Homework, define the actors by selecting them in your corpus. Lecture, the corn parliament, a description of the worldviews of the actors. Homework, define the worldviews of, of your actors, etc. And since yesterday I plan to add, uh, to add a reflexivity homework, because I believe this is a, a very beautiful idea. <clears throat> so each period between two classes class sessions is subject to an evaluated homework. The homework consists initially in seeking links on the web. First, a link to a piece of news to emphasize the need to be specific on the choice of topic. The homeworks, links or text, are posted to a web form available to the whole class with the help of the LMS, so that all homeworks are public. A corpus of links and topics is thus created and then debated in the classroom which allows me to discuss the feasibility of the chosen controversies. If I have a dozen of students, I can deal individually with everyone. If I have a hundred, I need to resort to peer assessment. During the course duration, links are used to define, to deepen a topic that expresses the relationships between science and society, according to the students. Um, the topic matter may be more or less constrained according to the context of the course, and then engaging in debate during course session, but also by student peers online. All along the semester, student tasks about these topics are to choose a topic, to search and criticize sources on this topic, to identify the major actors, to understand their, well, their worldview, their well counseling, then describe the relationships and dynamics between them, and finally build a narrative out of this. Mm, I will try to make things little with, an, with, an with an example of a chosen controversy, the case, of, the case study of Duty Chans. For those who don't know the story, Duty Chans is an Indian female athlete banned from competing in a Commonwealth game um, in July 13. She was banned on the grounds of failing a so-called gender verification test, which means a level of testosterone hormone was superior to a limit chosen by the sports governing bodies to define which athlete is male and which is female. Her, her level of testosterone is a natural condition, nothing to do with doping. Um, and it is shared by numerous women, especially in the athletes' world. 
Um, the normal sports regulatory procedure uh, in, in situations like this is a chemical and chirurgical intervention on the athletes. The Chichen refused and led the case to a court, the Tribunal d'Arbitrage du Sport. So the beginning of the story is the piece of news. It's, it's, the cho it's just choosing of the controversy in the sports uh, 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 newspaper. Then, other links are collected with keywords like the athlete's name, a physiological condition, hyperandrogenism, the gender verification phrase, uh, especially Wikipedia articles allow to widen the scope, leading to new sources. Actors are chosen within this corpus to depict the controversy. Typically, half a dozen for a student, numbers are doubled if for groups of two students, numbers are tripled for group of three students, etc., to allow for fair um, uh, work distribution among the students. Based on the content of the corpus of links, the actors and their worldviews are described to sum up what is at stake in the controversy. Here I have chosen, as an actor, the athletes and its supporters, the sport governing bodies, endocrinology, and intersex activists. And finally, a narrative synthesizing the whole story is the final homework to conclude the investigation. A word on my relaxed evaluation principles. I mentioned that attendance is not mandatory. What is mandatory, though, is to actually do the weekly homework and do it in time. It is not only essential for the individual students, it is also crucial for the dynamics of the class, as I rely heavily on the quantity and quality of links harvested from the homeworks to actually make the class engage in debate, both in the classroom, where we discuss the homeworks, and online, as some homeworks consist in assessing the work from a peer student. The evaluation is thus divided in a quantitative part, how many times does the host student do his or her weekly homework, and a qualitative part. And to achieve my aim of mass online participation, I reward students with an automatic pass for every student that completes the totality of his homework, whatever he writes or links to him. This is no. Leaving the other half of the mark to a qualitative judgment. The consequence is that students are not afraid to fail a class that they find hard to understand in the beginning. The mass participation to online homeworks and debates liveliness is increased, and it is crucial for the dynamics. But nobody goes to face-to-face -face classes. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, the issue part. Um, as a matter of fact, face-to-face -face attendance is not so bad. It actually depends on the significance of the class in the student's curriculum. My main issue, really, is to make students understand what the class is actually about because it does not belong to any well-known disciplinary categorization, students are often, are often confused about the learning objectives of the course, something I still have to work on. They do understand where the course is, leading to, is heading to, but their analysis in, retro, in retrospect of what they have learned shows that they tend to see the class as a critical analysis of media, uh, or even a critical analysis of the web more than a critique of the relationships, the interplay between science and society. The second issue is that it is hard to motivate the occasional students that do not like to browse the web, or more frequently, that do not know how to browse the web. Uh, the way the course is designed, there is no alternative for them. And the, mo the most tricky part, and it depends on various greatly with the student populations, is to generate the right momentum <coughs> to engage, actually, in debate in the classroom and on, on the web forums, and the boundary between total indifference and violent flaming, including political or religious uh, arguments, is very thin. And in some ways, this is the reason why weak attendances in class are not so a bad thing in this regard. Um, but it is also rewarding. It's rewarding for the teacher, for me, I am every day discovering pieces of news, discovering media, sites that I have never heard of. Uh, it's really good at getting me out of my filter bubble. Uh,